Hey guys, welcome to Boxing Squared for boxing news and views from around the internet. Post-fight reviews for four heavyweight fights on the Kome Pedraza undercard. Jared Anderson, he was in action. Richard Torres, FIA Jagba, and also Jeremiah Milton. So all getting stoppages, and this was kind of expected, but a couple of spectacular endings that were in there. So the heavyweight fights were split across two portions of the card. You had Anderson and Torres on the main card, and then there was part of the undercard, which was on ESPN+. Plus. But starting with Jared Anderson, who um, had a bit of resistance here from Milian Rovkanen. This was all over inside two rounds, but it was pretty hectic stuff. A fun fight. Milian Rovkanen fought like a guy who was on borrowed time, and he knew it. So he came out fast. He was aggressive. He was letting his hands go, and he was having a little bit of a success and actually after the fight because Jared Anderson came out south poor but Rov Cunnan started to have um, some success land a couple of decent shots on him Anderson seemed a little bit almost insulted when he was asked why did you change back to orthodox um, and Bernardo Asuna put it to him that Rov Cunnan had some success which he did but Anderson tried to refute that saying it was because of his lack of success they decided to revert to orthodox which I think is his best stance and I'm not so sure this experiment switching all the time is in his best interest but like your thoughts on that but as soon as he went back to orthodox started to get a bit more rhythm the jab started to get going but it was a case that you had Rov Kanan fighting at a pretty hectic pace so pretty interesting round but Anderson for the most part stayed out of trouble started to land some of his shots but you knew that this was only going to be a matter of time how long would Rov Kanan have gas he came out strong he was trying to roughhouse um, Jared Anderson in the second round uh, and they got into a bit of a tangle and Anderson hit him on the break the mouthpiece comes out Anderson warned about that but after the first minute and a half, Rov Kanan, the feet started to slow down, the hands started to be thrown less, and you knew he was kind of going to be, it was going to end soon because you had Anderson really ramping up activity and the body work especially took it out of Rov Kanan, softened him up. There were 20 body shots that Anderson landed in across the two rounds and some vicious ones too that really took the stuffing out of Rov Kanan and pretty much on the bell you had Anderson connecting with a huge right hand, Rov Kanan and goes down like a sack of potatoes off a cliff he doesn't even attempt to try to beat the count laid out and uh, it's waved off after he's counted out so pretty spectacular ending to the fight and I was glad to see that Rov Cunning came with some ambition that he didn't come to lay down that he tried to put it on Anderson tried to bum rush him a bit tried to actually do something to influence the outcome of the fight because he knew that he wasn't going to win a boxing um, contest against Anderson. I think this was eight rounds, whatever it was. He knew that he wasn't going to outlast Anderson, outskill him or anything like that. He came out fast and hard, tried to, you know, see what would happen as a result of that strategy. Had a bit of success, not enough. Anderson, who came out um, to the ring in a convict out outfit and he was shackled. After the fight, he said that he remained calm. He was patient. And he did assure everyone that he's 100% and he's going to be back in the gym. He called out Filip Hergovic because that was the name put to him. And he said he wants that fight. But he said other realistic fights that are next for him are people that are ranked in the various sanctioning bodies. So he did say the IBF top 10. He said the WBC top 10. Also, the IBF referenced them as well. And that's kind of the next step. I mean, and there's plenty of guys in some of these ranking sanctioning bodies that are not really top 10 fighters. But Anderson can fight them start to pick up and climb the uh, different um, alphabet bodies and their rankings because he needs to start working his way through some of those fringe contenders that he can take something from and it's going to start taking him where he needs to go which is into eliminators and eventually title shots down the line but good performance here good to see anderson back after injury so i haven't disclosed what was actually wrong with him but anderson don't said don't worry about that that he is healthy moving on to the second heavyweight fight this was uh, also part of the main card richard torres versus marco antonio canada and the um, whirlwind that is richard torres just came out 
aggressive, coming forward, barreling forward, landing left hands on Canedo, and he was down from one that connected. And moments later, Torres back on him after he beats the count, and there was a huge left hand that lands. And actually, he was probably done at this point, but he was held up by the ropes. Another left hand comes screaming in. He was, I think, knocked out at this point, and then Torres um, to finish proceedings and brutally lands a right hand down the middle and Canedo does that vicious um, falls and flops to the canvas and his body does that sort of it's uh, half bent when his uh, face hits the canvas and then it sort of smushes across the canvas as his body sort of uh, goes completely um, horizontal vicious he did not really show any signs of recovery because he was completely knocked out for about a minute it was pretty concerning stuff and you can see here uh, Canedo bad way that he was out here and it was about a minute before he really started coming to brutal from Richard Torres the opponent obviously Marco Antonio Canedo not much chop we can't really take too much of this it was all over in what was it 44 seconds two knockdowns or should I say the knockdown and then just absolutely obliterate him um, after the first knockdown um, he's got good hand speed he's got good foot speed and certainly we've seen he's got some decent pop and that's going to sort of take care of guys at this level. But obviously, um, less than five fights into his pro career, this is what it is. It's activity, it's under the bright lights, all that sort of stuff. Can't read too much into it. Certainly looking forward to seeing him again soon. What did you make of the performance? Moving to FIA Jagba, who was facing journeyman Joseph Damos. And this appeared a mismatch on paper, and it certainly transpired like that in the ring. F.R. Jagba could have had him out of there pretty much at any time because Damos was a heavy bag with legs, didn't really do anything except put up the high guard and uh, really take a little bit of punishment. But F.A.R. Jagba, who's been out of the ring since the Frank Sanchez fight, he's also had surgery on both of his elbows. He was looking to show us that he's starting to improve on the technical front not just a flat-footed one-two guy he tried to work in some other shots more hooks there were some uppercuts throughout the fight few body shots and actually the first knockdown which came in the second round which is where the fight ended that came from a body shot on the end of a, f a flurry of punches a couple of shots up top around the guard ended with a body shot and a shot and damos goes down didn't look terribly hurt, but obviously there'd been a couple of moments uh, prior to that where legs had stiffened just a little bit, but this was always just a matter of time. Damos was there for the kill. FIA Jugba had increased his pace in round two, throwing with a bit more intent and regularity. He was still placing his punches and looking to work in some of the new arsenal of punches he's been working on. And ultimately, it was a cuffing right hand that puts Joseph Damos down to a knee and the referee waves it off. But it had an air that uh, Damos was about to get stopped and brutally. I was expecting he was going to get totally banjoed in this one. But uh, he knew what was what and basically took that knee uh, from that cuffing shot and allowed the referee to, to wave it off, who could be heard saying that Damos couldn't defend himself. Make of it what you will. This was a confidence builder a fight for FIA Jug, but a comeback, a little bit of activity. He showed us his wares, what he's been working on. But the thing is, and this is where it comes to FIA Jugba, the guy obviously had come in lighter for this one. He's been working on his technical ability. They're trying to sort of reposition him in a style, but I'm just not so sure at the higher level, based on what we saw in this fight and obviously what we've seen before what he's going to do and how much he can improve to really foot it with guys sort of inside the top 20. Frank Sanchez ended up sort of making him a little bit silly in their fight, made him so hesitant to throw his right hand for fear of what was coming back and he was dropped in that one. We saw he's been working on some things but he was slow as molasses. He wasn't throwing like it was natural. He was thinking about every single shot, where what he was doing, where he was placing it. He won't be afforded that luxury at a higher level. He's going to have to fight more on instinct, putting punches together like he did when he early on. Obviously, the way that he fought, especially behind the one-two, that obviously hasn't proven to be enough. So they're trying to add to his arsenal, change his style a little bit. And I think with the coming down in weight, they want him to be a bit more nimble, not so flat-footed. But 
just not so sure we're gonna what sort of results we're going to see i think he is a work in progress but i'm not sure the job will ever get done but in terms of the other fight on the card, Jeremiah Milton, a local, also against another local, Nick Jones. So Milton, he uh, actually was sort of, I don't want to say bum-rushed at the start, but you had Nick Jones coming forward, aggressive, looking to, you know, burrow in with the head, tie up, make it rough and awkward. And it just took a round just for Jeremiah Milton just to acclimate. It was a very even first round, and you had Nick Jones uh, having a bit of success coming forward. Decent left hook that he landed uh, um, I think partway or towards the end of that first round but round two Jeremiah Milton more composed and you know he'd sort of seen off that initial sort of flurry from Nick Jones that aggression behind the back of the jab he was uh, making Jones think about coming in because obviously he kept tagging him and Milton he was looking for the counter there were a couple of occasions where Jones would throw something and he'd, he'd not find the target and obviously he was open to a counter Milton was getting close and ultimately drops him when he hits him basically on it with a right hand counter to the top of the four head jones goes down heavily he doesn't look right and then the referee waves it off so it looked impressive the ending and obviously high on the forehead there um, jones's body didn't respond well and another win for jeremiah milton who advances to six and oh with five ko's and i didn't mind this fight for um, milton where he's at nick jones actually came with some ambition he was looking to hit and hurt milton he wasn't coming just to uh, to fall down there was resistance but ultimately as i said in the pre-fight you were going to have jeremiah milton work a little bit and then he was probably going to land something that was going to knock him out uh, jones had previously been uh, stopped and viciously by actually by fir jugba so four fights on this card, pretty predictable stuff in general. What do you make of it all? Drop a comment loud and often. Hit like, hit subscribe, or follow me on Twitter. Boxing underscore squared. I'm out.